Kununurra Airport in far northwestern Australia. Welcome to the Bungle Bungles, or otherwise known as the Purnalulu National Park. One of the most amazing parts of Australia, only becoming well known in 1983. Before that it was a secret known only to the indigenous tribes and peoples of this land and a couple of helicopter pilots. Along with the Great Barrier Reef and Uluru, it's uh, one of the most amazing world heritage areas, natural heritage in Australia. You know, the geologists don't entirely agree about how all of this was formed, but here goes one of the stories. About 300 million years ago, there are a couple of major geological lifts. This used to be a sea floor in a very shallow inland sea, and it lifted up and a series of lakes and river systems formed depositing a mix of fine silt and uh, thicker rock and when you look closely at the bungles you see layers of orange and, and black. Uh, about 150 million years ago though this started to erode forming gullies through all of the streams and creeks leaving these kind of uh, honeycomb uh, uh, or bees nest type shapes you see all around. The entire Bungle Bungles is made out of white sandstone. White. The orange and the black lines come from two different things. The finer sediment stone holds water better during the uh, wet season and therefore an algae grows on the outside. A cyano cyanobacteria otherwise known as uh, blue-green algae and that creates the black colour in the, in the finer stone. The heavier stone leaches a little bit more ferrous oxide or iron ore or rust and that creates the orange colour. But it's only about five millimetres thick, both the orange and the black, and if you scrape underneath that you get the white sandstone that all of these massives are made out of. You can see here how the uh, ferrous oxide creates a protective layer and if you lose that then it erodes a lot deeper, a lot faster, and in fact can push all the way through and become a bit of a window. <sighs> what you see through a lot of Australia are these termite mounds. This one's an old one. You can see it's hollowed out in the middle here. This one's been evacuated. The Queen must have died. But when they build them, they build them with all these channels and tunnels and little uh, places where the air can get in and get out and these can be up to 15 degrees cooler inside than they are outside by the way the ducting is built. It's a lot of effort these are built with the secretions of the termites themselves from the moisture and from the resin they get from the spinifex grass. Now, termites don't deal very well with ultraviolet light so they spend a lot of time inside but they still need to go out particularly at night to get the spinifex grass and things like that. So it's alright if you live here in a mound down on the ground but what happens if during the breeding the Queen and the King were caught by an updraft and blown up onto a rock face? What do termites do then? Then you've got to build a path down from your nest all the way down to the ground. That's a lot of work so you can see here here is this path coming down from the nest up above coming down towards the ground where the workers can get their work done. Some of these paths go 200 meters so when you see a nest up on the cliff and you see this poor little path coming all the way down the average life expectancy of a little termite and his little eggs is about 15 years 15 years up and down those paths day and night. Not good. All the glistening bits on the spinifex that you see shining in the sun are all bits of resin and that's the natural resin in the spinifex that's used both by both the termites to build their nest but also the indigenous people to uh, waterproof their spears to make sure the spears stay straight even if they get wet. This area is known as the cathedral. 
imagine what it's like in the wet season when this is cascading down a huge waterfall into this pond and just listen to the place oh, and when you got a dickhead doing that Examples of the Kidja people rock hard over here. The stencil of the boomerang here. Another one up there. And you can just make out a hand here. They're not very old though. Um, you know they're not very old because the pigments aren't particularly resilient pigments, but more importantly, this rock face is uh, not a particularly resilient rock face given that it's sandstone subject to a lot of weather. Uh, how old? pre-European settlement maybe, but probably not. Yeah, Australia really is a spectacularly beautiful country. Right, look, 